Rick Roslin here with another DIY total solar eclipse project you can do in preparation for the April 2024 solar eclipse. I learned about this at one of the coolest museums in the world, the Exploratorium in San Francisco. This is one of their science snacks. It's called a 3D model eclipse cup. And it's pretty, you know, I tried to find something that you can make to understand why we have eclipses and why we don't have them all the time. And I've come up with this project thanks to the Exploratorium. So let's try if we can see what we can make there. So it basically, you need three cups. And I have three cups that we have cut down. You need a sun. In this case, I'm gonna use a tennis ball or we can actually use a flashlight. You need one cup that you're gonna cut down for the earth to sit on. You need another cup that you're going to put over that. This is the elliptical plane. You can see that this line goes right through the earth, the elliptical plane. And then you have a push pin on that. Our third cup is going to be the lunar cup. I've added a moon and I have put it down towards the bottom. So when I set this on here, there's a tilt. And just like the moon's tilt, it's about five degrees, 5.1 degrees off the elliptic. And so that's what we're gonna make. And we're gonna see if we can use this model to learn more about solar eclipses. And like all models, they have a job to do, but they do have limitations. Let's build this one and explore the 3D cup model, total solar eclipse from the Exploratorium. So I got me some clay right here and I'm, I'm gonna make that clay, oh, it's about a little less than an inch in diameter. And this is going to be my earth and my earth cup. But it's too big for my model if I use this, the sun here. These are not to scale. So what I need to do is cut this down a little bit and I'm gonna take my scissors that's a pretty good earth cup right there. I'm going to stick that clay. So here's my earth cup. Sun, earth, not the scale. All right. Our next one we're going to do is um, we're going to take a cup and we're going to find the midpoint. We're going to use a marker here. And we're going to try to find a midpoint right that goes all through all of them. And that's going to be right here. And now I'm going to rotate this around, holding it steady and making what's going to end up being called the elliptical. This is a, a plane that goes through the center of the sun and most of the planets rotate around this elliptical plane. And what I'm going to do is add my push pin, careful not to uh, dent it too much, and uh, here we go. And so now, Earth, my push pin, doing pretty good. My last cup is going to be my lunar cup, my moon cup. And I'm going to use a different color marker, probably this red one right here. And I'm going to come about one centimeter up, about three-eighths of an inch, one centimeter up. A pretty good line around the bottom rim. I'm going to take my moon. In this case, I get some, some dark moon, some dark moon matter. <laughs> it's about a fourth the size of the earth. And I'm going to put it right down here on, stick it to my my cup right there and so now I have my lunar cup and it's going to be at a tilt look it's tilted down so this is so cool you've made your own model with this rotating around I now have sunlight shining this and you notice that this is sometimes below the elliptic right there it's below the elliptic and as I rotate it around Sometimes it's above the elliptic, like right there. It's above the elliptic. The elliptic is that, that imaginary line, that plane that goes through the center of the earth and the center of the sun. Every month we'd have a total solar eclipse if we didn't have that elliptic. But the moon is not on the elliptic. It's five degrees off the elliptic. So half of the year it's below the elliptic and the other half, it's above the elliptic. But there are two times during the year, if I put my elliptic pin back in, there are two times during the year where 
they line up and those have a fancy name. It's called a node, a node. It's when it lines up, all three of them line up perfectly, not too high, but right about here, they'll line up perfectly where you're gonna have an eclipse. Six months later, as we're way on the other side, six months later, there's the opportunity for another eclipse. And it's amazing that twice a year, these all have the potential to line up that we can get a solar eclipse. But remember, the Earth is a big place. Three quarters of it is water. So the chance of a solar eclipse being on land makes it even more rare. And coming in your backyard, like it's gonna happen on April the 8th at 3.08 in the afternoon, is gonna make it a phenomena you do not wanna miss. So make your 3D eclipse model in a cup and have some fun so you are an informed eclipse viewer. In fact, I'm gonna call you a umbrophile. An umbrophile. Umbra means shadow, file means to love. You make this, you're officially an umbrophile. You love eclipses.